What's up YouTube? In this video, you are going to learn how to use operator overloading in C Sharp. It sounds quite fancy, but it's actually quite simple. So let's get started. All right, so first let's look at the problem at hand. Well, let's say we have two numbers, a equals five and b equals three defined as ints. If we want to add these two numbers, we can do something like this. int c is a plus b. But what if we have two objects of type ticket, where each ticket has a duration and ID properties and maybe other properties like creation date, etc. Naturally, we can't just add two tickets using the plus operator because the compiler won't know how to add these two tickets exactly. Do we want to add the time of the creation? Do we need to create a new ID for the third ticket object? In our case, when we add two ticket objects, we want to have a third ticket object with its duration equaling ticket one duration plus ticket two duration. This is where operator overloading comes in handy. So operator overloading is the overloading of the built-in operators in C Sharp. It is the same overloading concept that we are familiar with, but apply to operators instead. Operator overloading will allow us to use the c -sharp operators with our own classes and structs. So the syntax to overload an operator will look like this. Since we will most likely use the overload from outside our class, we will start by using public static. This is because the operator methods are class methods and not object methods. Then we define the return type followed by the operator keyword. And then we need to specify the operator we are overloading, for example, plus, minus, and finally the parameters of the operator. For example, if we have a class called car with a property called speed, then we can overload the arithmetic operator plus using the following code, public steady car operator plus. We started with public static, then the return type, which is in this case a car, then the plus operator followed by two car parameters, which we are trying to add together. Now our operator logic is going to be as follows. First, we will create a new car object called car sum, and then we will set its car speed to be the speed of car one, as well as car two combined. So car one plus car two's speed. And finally, we will return it. As you can see, it's very simple. So let's try it out in Visual Studio. Therefore, let's go ahead and create a new class. And let's call this class ticket. Now this class ticket should have two properties, one being the duration of the ticket and the other one, the creation date. So when was it created? And this is going to be a date time. And then we have a simple constructor, which will take in the duration in hours of whatever is passed to it. And then we'll create the creation time as the date time now. So the current time, so to speak. Now let's go over to the main method. In the main method, what we want to do is we want to, first of all, create two tickets. Okay, one is going to have a duration of two and the other one will have a duration of three. So first ticket two, second ticket three. And we want to now add the two tickets creating a third ticket object. So let's call this one sum ticket. So the sum ticket should take the first ticket plus the second ticket. So you can see that we already get an error here. And let me quick, quickly fix that as well here. So we get an error that will say that the plus operator cannot be applied to operands of type ticket and ticket. And as we discussed, there is no way for the compiler to know how to add two tickets together. This is why we need to provide our own logic by overloading the plus operator. So let's do that. In our case, we want to add the duration of our tickets and we want to have a new creation time because it's a new ticket. So let's go back to our ticket class and take care of that. Therefore, I'm going to use, as stated earlier, public static, and then the type that I want to return, which will be ticket, then the operator keyword and the operator itself that I want to use. So I want to override the plus keyword. 
And what I'm going to say is I want to use ticket A and ticket B. And now let's say what we want to return. Well, we want to return a ticket, right? So we need to return a new ticket. And here, that's where we add the logic. So here, I'm going to say the duration hours plus the duration hours of B. So here, the A duration hours plus the B duration hours and hours, so to speak. Quick pause. In this video, you learn something about C Sharp. And if you want to learn everything there is to know that you need for the fundamentals and to become a real C Sharp developer, then definitely check out my C Sharp masterclass in which you're going to learn all of the things you need to know about C Sharp. So you're going to learn how to do the basics, how to use object-oriented programming, how to use WPF in order to create your own user interfaces, how to use databases, how to use link, how to create your own games using Unity, and a lot more. So if you want to become a real C-Sharp developer, definitely check out the link in the description below. All right, and that's pretty much the logic. So if we now go back to our program CS, our main method, we can see that the problem disappeared, the error disappeared. So now it just says first ticket plus second ticket, and that works out because some ticket is just going to create a new ticket with the duration in hours of those tickets combined. So now let's just use that in order to write it onto the console as well, because otherwise, well, there wouldn't be anything to see for us. So here display the sum ticket duration in hours, the total duration in hours is, plus the sum ticket of the duration in hours. So here I want to see how long the sum ticket is going to be, because we never defined how many hours the sum ticket should have, while well, the duration in hours or in time. So let's run this real quick. And we will see the total duration in hours is five. So we have an in too many here as it seems. But overall, you see that this is how we can override what should happen if we are using certain operators. So in this case, we use the plus operator. Now you could of course do that with the minus operator or the divide operator or even the multiplication operator. So what should happen in that case? So that's something that I would recommend you try for yourself as a little challenge. All right, so now that you learned how to use the operator overloading in C Sharp, how about just hitting that like button for us and also the subscribe button if you haven't subscribed already. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching it and I hope to see you in the next one.